better than that. Uh, a little show called Arrow. Torchwood. And then there's one more, uh, Doctor Who. Give it up, Mr. John Barrowman. If I were president, we'd use any bathroom we want to. How are you guys? Good? Are you going to be all, there all the time tweeting and texting? Yeah? Moo. <laughs> no, serious. No. Oh, I know your staff, but I don't want you to say, if you do it, just don't be so obtrusive, yeah? Give it up. I'm kidding. Look, they're panicked now. They're like, what? What? I'm joking. You're fine. You're good. You're good. How are we all? Awesome. Um, have you all heard my birthday story? Who's heard my birthday story? Raise your hand. Huh? No? Oh, one, two people. You know I celebrated my 50th birthday last year, right? And I, uh... When I uh, celebrated, I wanted to see what I look like with um, my normal color hair, because this is not real. It's not real, honey. Is yours? Let me see your roots. No, yours ain't real either, girl. I know that scalp tinge. <laughs> She's like, I love you. Hate you. <laughs> um, no, so I, I shaved my head to see um, what I'd look like with my gray hair. So, no, I'm just kidding. They just, yeah, they can move back. They're fine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Now they'll be like, he's an asshole. <laughs> um, so, I, uh, uh, I shaved my head. I'm gray underneath. And I thought, uh, first off, when I got it done, I thought, I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm just going to show up to my birthday party with my gray hair. And I, I went to a place in West Hollywood, and I walked in, and I had the long, um, dark locks, and the girl started shaking my head, and she, when we're done, she's like, you look really good. And I went, really? And she went, yeah. She said, you have a young face, and you have the gray hair. She said, it looks kind of interesting. You don't look old at all. And I was like, okay, fine, no problem. I walked out the door in West Hollywood, which is the gayest of gay areas in California, right? Yeah, and I walked, well, there's some in San Jose, too. <laughs> So I walked out, walking down West Hollywood, the street, and uh, Santa Monica Boulevard, and two guys walked past me. Half my eyes went, hey, daddy. And I was like, oh. I'm like, I am not your daddy. However, I could be. So I went to the, I went to the birthday party that night, and I was very excited. I thought, it's going to be a blast, because I invited all my friends and family, and uh, you know, Stephen told me, Stephen Amell, in case you don't know who I'm talking about, you know. <laughs> There's a reason they call him the arrow. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so Stephen told me when I first started on Arrow five years, well, it was five years ago. Uh, and I, he said, that, you know, when you're 50, you know, we'll have a big birthday party. I said, look, Stephen, every one of my birthdays, uh, I've celebrated on a set of a TV show, whether it be Doctor Who, Torchwood, Desperate Housewives, uh, you know, whatever. I said, so with Arrow, I expect to celebrate my birthday. I said, also, and he's like, well, if you do have a party and I'm invited, um, I'll deliver your cake in a Speedo and, uh, you know, bring it out to you. And I was like, okay. So I went up to my... <laughs> to the producer's office. I have to have my birthday off. <laughs> They're like, why? I said, you don't need to know. <laughs> but I have to have it off. I had to pay them, but I did get it off. <laughs> anyway. 
anyway, so they, uh, I went to uh, my birthday party, I arrived, I'm there, and everybody's there, and you know, uh, Stephen and uh, my, my friend Keith came from London, there was a whole bunch of people, and the time came for the birthday cake, and we finished dancing, and uh, Kelsey, you all know Kelsey, right? <laughs> Kelsey, come wave. <laughs> Don't sound so excited. So I sit down, I sit down, and Kelsey uh, comes up to me and goes, you're gonna love this. And I'm like, really? Lights go down and I hear, happy birthday to you. And all of a sudden, walking down my hallway from the master bedroom, I can see candles coming. And as they get into the light, the dim light of the living room, I can see Keith, my friend, and Stephen Amell, half naked in a gold lame speedo. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God! Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I lean over to Kelsey and go, oh my God, is it real? And she's like, it's totally real. I'm like, is it really happening? She's like, yes, it really is happening. I said, how do you know? She said, because when I was in the bedroom, I got something for you. I went, what did you get for me? She said, don't worry, because I took video. <laughs> I'm changing. She's like, no, you gotta blow out the candles. I said, blow out the candles. I want to see that before I blow. <laughs> so I said, what were they doing? She said, it's totally awesome. She said they were like getting ready, pumping themselves up, and they're putting the speedos on. I'm like, you totally got it all. She's like, yeah, even the part where they're on top of each other doing push-ups. <laughs> I said, are you kidding me? She's like, no, they were totally on top of each other doing push-ups. I said, well, no wonder they were in my master bedroom. They were channeling Scott and I. You're welcome. <laughs> Kelsey, everybody! So, I'm, I'm thinking this is awesome. And we did, seriously, the video does exist. It will never get put online. Unless I do a crowdfunding for charity. <laughs> we'll do it for a hemorrhoid charity. How about <laughs> And uh, uh, I'm ready to blow out the candles, and I'm, I'm looking at them, and I'm thinking, that's really weird. There's something written on their chests. And uh, bless their heart, um, uh, Keith, my friend, he's dyslexic. So he was meant to write uh, JB on their chest, but he wrote BJ. I thought Christmas had come. <laughs> I thought they were asking me. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, I looked at that, there's red all over their chest. And I went back to my bedroom to see where the deed had happened, also to watch the video that Kelsey had taken. So I go back to the bedroom and I walk in and there's all this red stuff on the carpet. I'm like, what the hell is that? Kelsey's like, that's the paint they put on their chest on the carpet. I said, you know what you never do in a gay man's room? Leave a mess on his curtains or his carpet! <laughs> That one didn't go down very well, did it? No. Anyway, but the day or that day earlier, I took my niece's nephews to go quad biking. Did you, you call it quad biking here, don't we? Yeah? Yeah. What do you call it? Well, you're quadding? That sounds more like a sex act. <laughs> what are you doing tonight? I'm quadding. <laughs> so we're going quad biking in Palm Springs, and I went with my niece's nephews. Again, gray hair, shave, right? And I've been there before. And I'm standing, and the guy who's doing the instructions, we're all standing in a semicircle with my nieces and nephews. They're all in their, their late teens and 20s. And I'm standing there, and the guy goes, yeah, when you're driving the quad bike, don't put your feet down, because when you get your, uh, you put on the brakes, if you stop and you roll back and your feet are down, they're gonna cut off your legs, and we'll have to call you Peggy. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> he's kind of funny, and he's also kind of cute. And he looked at me, and he clocked my eye, and I went, and he went, 
Yeah, and when you're doing the throttle, don't put the throttle on too hard, because if you throw, throw the quad bike back, you'll, you'll fall off and hit your head, and we'll have to take it off. We'll call you Bo. I went, oh, he's good. And then he says, and then when you, and he stops and he looks at me again and he goes, you know something? You look very familiar. And I'm like, <laughs> he recognizes me. He really does. And I said, yeah, well, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, you look like that guy from Doctor Who and, and Arrow, but much older. <laughs> My nieces and nephews in the semicircle went, because <laughs> they knew what was about to happen. But I went, Turner, come here, my oldest nephew, uh, so the oldest boy. I went, come here. He said, what's the matter, Uncle John? I said, if he thinks we're so old, we're coming back here at 1 o'clock tonight. He said, why? I said, because let him see how this old guy deflates all his tires and then slashes them and writes, thank you very much. Have a great day. He went, are you kidding? You're really going to do that? I said, no, but I'm going to pay you $500, and you're going to do it. <laughs> The next day, news. <laughs> uh, business slash tires, air let out of them, done by a man in a TARDIS dress. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I didn't do that. <laughs> really? <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> anyway, I like to just go to questions with you guys because that's what I like, I like to feed off of you. Is anyone up there? One person, that's awesome. <laughs> if we make our way, questions, yeah, and then we'll answer them because I'm like a vampire. I have a diary. <laughs> oh my god, you guys are really asleep today. I, I flown in from London yesterday. Come on, get up with me. Get it, get up with me. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. Are you, you're alright? Where are you from? You're from Seattle. What's your name? Nat, how do you say Natalie? Like vampire, Natalie? I love that. I love that. Natalie, I'm, you know, you're doing that like a vampire. I've got a lot of friends who are hung like a donkey. I know we've met, but you got through that pretty quick, hung like a donkey. What is the little pinky bit for? Is that the extra bit on the end? But I love how it swings and it's up, right? What if it was a floppy donkey? <laughs> it looks like it looks like a dance move, doesn't it? <laughs> Good luck explaining that one to the kids on the way home, everybody. <laughs> what was he talking about, Mom? Dad, shut up! <laughs> What if I said hung like a reindeer? Because it's, it's the holidays, you have no idea. What is <laughs> Where are my deaf friends? Where are they? Is it right there? Right there? Anyone else? No? Just one? But you all know how to applaud for deaf people? Ready? No, don't go woo! They can't hear you! <laughs> Question, this sweetheart over here. How are you? Good. Awesome. I wanted to say I love your outfit. I wanted to say thank you. You know I'm doing a photo op with it later if you want to. We're, we're in that photo op with you. You are? Me and her. I know. I expect the best pose from you. Uh, we've seen we've seen like three different outfits from you. So. I know. I know you have. Have you seen the, the special place that I put the star? No. <laughs> turn the house lights up a little bit, because I like to see your faces. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sweetheart. Um, I just have recently realized that I'm bi or maybe lesbian, and I was curious how awesome. I should tell my parents about how I am, because they're Catholic and they're like really strict, and I'm like, I didn't know if you had any advice for me. 
Uh, the best advice that I can give you, do you still live at home? Yeah. How old are you? 21. 21. Okay, so you're able to make your own decisions, yeah. right? Um, and you're saying they're really strict? Yeah. But that's about discipline. That's not about you no, being they, you. No, they literally control every aspect of my life. What? Okay. And now I'm 21 huh? and I'm like sick of it. Well, then you got to stand up for yourself. That's the thing, and that's the most difficult thing that you, are, you have to do because obviously you love your parents, and they're strict because they love you. However, you're not living your life for them, and you have to make that clear to them. You're living your life for yourself. So therefore, the way that I usually tell people the way to approach that is sit them down and in a very positive way say, there's something I'd like to tell you, but it involves my life and my future, and I want you to be a part of it because I think it's going to be awesome, and it's going to be great, and if you decide not to be part of it, I'm totally ready to get up and walk out of here. Okay. If you are able to like, do that. Yeah, because I have um, my own job and everything, and, I'm, and I have an apartment set up in case they don't take it well. Well, that's very smart of you. That's very smart. However, I hope they do take it well, but also remember, and a lot of things that uh, 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 trans, gay, Bisexual, I'm just gonna go through the gamut. If I forget anybody, I'm sorry. There's so many letters nowadays. I'm just gonna say everybody. So when it comes time that you're gonna tell them, you have to also remember there's a transition period where they may be like, they may either be angry right away or they may be happy right away, but there's a middle period where they're gonna go either on either sense, I'm not sure my reaction was the right reaction. There's gonna be a learning curve, but we can't expect it all to be great all overnight, okay? okay Cause so, I tried to tell my mom and she thought I was joking. Okay, so you've already had a little conversation about it. I, I was like, what would you do if I was lesbian? And she thought I was joking. Okay, well, you know, that's maybe her way of dealing with it by not accept, not saying she's ready for it. But again, just come out with it and say it. And once you say it, you know, like I did with my parents, I want you to be part of my life, but I'm prepared to walk out the door. If you say you want to disown me and my mother stood up and my dad went, oh, and my mom stood up and she said, I've known. <laughs> I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me? The first person I told is my friend right there. Sorry? The first person I told is my friend right there. Well, that's awesome. At least you know you have a best friend that you can, uh, you know, have a shoulder to lean on. But also know that you make sure there's other people that you can talk to before you make the decision. Because my way might not be the right way for you, okay? okay. But I, my, my belief is be true to who you are and don't ever apologize for who you are, okay? okay. Thank you. Let us know how it goes. But for God's sake, don't say John Barrowman told me to come out of the <laughs> If you do that, I'll kind of come and find you and spank you. Let, let me know, let me know how it goes on Twitter, okay? You tag me in it, so to speak. <laughs> However, I look good in this. Anyway, over here. Hello, my dear. Hi. I have a question about a funny, memorable moment that you've had from like Era or Legends of Tomorrow that you have that you'd like to share. A funny or memorable moment? <sighs> I mean, there's a lot of them. Um, but coming up with, with them off the top of my head on the moment in spontaneous circumstances <laughs> is always kind of difficult. Most of the stuff that for me that was fun was happening um, like behind the scenes or offset, you know? And it was uh, like one of my fun, it wasn't really a joke moment, but one of the moments I loved was when uh, I had all Team Arrow standing around me, right? And uh, Malcolm was giving this speech and at the end of the speech he was trying, to, he was basically telling them what to do, how to do it in order to get what they want, right? Because they always came to him for advice. <laughs> even though they never wanted him in the circle. He, you know, but Malcolm was cool with that. Like, he knew. He loved all of them in a way to help them, but he would have killed all of them at any moment. <laughs> and vice versa, okay? So it was the mo he was given this speech, and at the end of the speech, it was just the best line. Because to watch the reactions of all of them, I, and Malcolm says, he gives the instructions like, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to do this, and you've got to make it believe, make believe, that you're gonna do this, but then again, none of you are very good actors. <laughs> and when I said it, they all went like, they were like, because, and I said to them afterwards, are you guys, you're, 
you're cool with that. I just thought I'd, you know, because it was in the script. And I, they maybe, I don't know if they thought it was going to be cut, but I'm, I left it in. I said it. I said, you okay? They, they said, but yeah, you said it with such truth. <laughs> Oh, you did? Did you I enjoy just it? Loved it. Loved it. It was so awesome. The atmosphere was. If you haven't seen it, I did a big Disney concert at the Royal Albert Hall. I hosted it and sang a couple of numbers, and the rest of the guys who were in, girls who were in the guys and ladies who were in the cast, just phenomenal. And it was the atmosphere in the building was so incredibly fun and warm and. Everyone was having a great time. Anyway, shut up, Ashley. Yes, of course. <laughs> I am so and jet like right now, I cannot tell you. Good, good. I'm surprised I'm not doing things that are really outrageous because my brain is gone. <laughs> I'm just telling you that. Yes. Okay. And then obviously Doctor Who and Torchwood. And then the movies. Which has been your favorite in the past? I'm... Your favorite media or your favorite. I never answer favorite questions. For the in the past. In the past, but, in the past. but that could still be, the, I still do all it of that. It could still be the current. <laughs> yeah, because I, like for instance, right now, I mean, I'm in, I flew to London. I've had rehearsal all last week. I do a Christmas show in the UK every year for about six weeks. Right. And we do it for two, we do two shows a day, seating 2,000 people at each show. And we do, and I only get one day off over, oh, wow. that's Christmas Day. Yeah. And we, um, we work the rest of the time. Um, so I'm rehearsing that at the moment. Flew out yesterday. I fly back tomorrow night, and I start rehearsals in Manchester again in the theater on uh, Monday evening. So wow. I, I still do all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I love, I love live audiences. The one thing about television, and this is when I, I learned when I first started in, at the BBC <laughs> years ago. <laughs> I started out children's television, believe it or not. That must have been interesting. No, I did. <laughs> I used to host one of the most popular uh, t children's TV shows, a live Saturday morning show with two other hosts. We had the spot. It was called Live and Kicking. That's right. And it was, I think I did it for three years. We did, um, and it was the most popular TV show in the nation. And then I did another kids TV show called The Movie Game, where it was me hosting and had all the kids doing fun stuff for to rent, you know, about all the movies. So children's television, I knew I had to move on to adult television as soon as we were doing a game in the movie game where uh, we had to herd sheep into um, a pen, right? And I can't remember what the movie was that we were referencing, but the game was you had to get us, and you had to use air guns, like shh, right? To blow the sheep <laughs> into the pen to get them all together. The two teams were competing, right? So here's me. On, on camera going, okay, everybody, blow your sheep. <laughs> and as we're playing the game, I'm looking at the sheep and I'm thinking, there's something not right about these sheep. <laughs> and I, I, I went, I went, cut, stop, stop the game for a second, and stop, we're gonna have to go back and we'll start again, but I need to have a word with my producers, like, guys, can I talk to you? And I walked over to him and I said, um, we have a slight problem. You realize if this game goes out on air, you're not going to be able to show those sheep from behind. They're like, why? I said, I don't know where you bought them, but those sheep have a vagina. <laughs> and they're like, oh my God. So they got the props, and I said, they go, where did you go to get these sheep? He said, I got them online at an online prank sex shop. What? <laughs> they were anatomically correct sheep. <laughs> Female sheep, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> On children's television. I'm like, we have to cut this game right now. Anyway, they just shot around the back ends of the sheep. The game stayed in. So if you ever see it online, you now know. They were sex sheep. <laughs> You're welcome. But I love everything that I do. That's, that's why I do it. I just enjoy every part of the entertainment industry because that's what I call myself, an entertainer. I don't label actor, singer, dancer, model, blah, 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 blah. I'm just an entertainer. That's it. And that's what I hope you like me doing. <laughs> yes. and, uh, guys, so everybody can see behind you, can you just maybe sit down? That would be awesome because I know people are getting blocked now. Yeah, but when you're answering your question, asking you, can you get down? There you go. That's it. So is that okay, everybody? You can see now, right? Good, thank you. You're welcome. There you go. Yes. Yeah, how's it going, man? 
How's you going, Mal? Yeah, how's it going, man? I, Mal going fine. <laughs> I said, how's it going, man? What? I said, how's it going, man? It's going good, man. Yeah. I thought yeah. you said, how's it going, Mal? Like, how are you, Malcolm? <laughs> no, no, no. If it was Nate the Billion, I'd be saying that. All right, okay. <laughs> but I've got to say, Dr. Billion's Cap Jack, favorite, favorite role of yours ever, dude. I don't answer favorite questions. No, it's my favorite role of yours. What is? Cap Jack on Dr. Who. Awesome. And I was wondering, now that Chris Chidnall is taking over a showrunner, and, and you came out and supported her, but with Jody the new doctor, would you, and I'm sure you've answered this before, want to come back for a full season of Doctor Who with Jody's Doctor? Because I think Jack needs to be back on the TARDIS to be happy. I love your passion. <laughs> uh, if I was asked, absolutely, the drop of a hat. I would do it, no problem. Uh, the question is being asked. Um, but, you know, uh, you guys are the fan base, and you... Not that they would do it, but I, I would love to be asked. It would be awesome. I think that Jack, he would walk up to her and just kind of go, really? <laughs> okay. I'm game if you are. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, one of my favorite recent episodes. Merida? Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. Um, it's actually Poison Ivy. Oh, a different rendition. Got it, yeah. got it. Um, totally favorite. different. Poison Ivy Meredith from Disney, two different characters. <laughs> Both redheads, but completely different. Yes. Um, the new, the recent Flash episode, Duet, Yes. was one of my favorite ones. And I was wondering how it was to sing with everybody and have that. It was awesome to sing with everybody, but we didn't sing together. Yeah. We recorded it at different times. And uh, I did um, my recording in Vancouver, and I don't know where the others did it, but uh, I was just thrilled to be able to sing also on the same uh, track as Jesse and uh, Victor, uh, because I've been fans of theirs for a long time for their Broadway work. And as, you know, as Victor said to me, he said, he said, it's just glorious hearing you sing. And I'm like, it's just glorious hearing you say that to me. <laughs> Can you design a better ship next time, please? Hi. Yes. Hi, I just, this is my first con, so I'm, I'm really happy that Virgin! I <laughs> Welcome! Thank you. What's the thing you like about it the most? <laughs> oh, it's that great, you can't remember. No, I, it's, it's amazing just being able to be here and to connect with all these people and to... Everybody who's like-minded, everybody who doesn't give a damn, but loves the same thing, and yeah. we're all here for the same reason, and there's no judging going on in this exactly. building, and that's what's awesome, right? It is. Yeah. I mean, but I wanted to ask you, oh. great legs, by the way. Thank you very much. You're rocking those shoes. I was just looking at them, though. I need, to, I need a little more work here. Squat. Just, you know, squat. around as much as normal but I the day uh what's today Saturday I left London on Friday morning but Thursday afternoon in rehearsals I was doing one of my numbers uh I sing uh, it's a song called you got me wrapped up around your fingers and I'm supposed to do that and I walked and I was in my my, my uh, we call them trainers my trainers and I popped my ankle and if you can see get a close-up sorry Mr. Cameron get a close-up on my ankles you see my no, it's blue. You see that? Oh. Look at this. See the difference? Uh, yeah. So I'm suffering for you guys. <laughs> Ladies, I have cankles right now. <laughs> yes. So go ahead. I wanted to ask you what it was like to kiss James Marston back in that Torchwood episode he was at. Uh, James Mas Masters. Yeah, James yes. Marsden, I'd also kiss. <laughs> I don't think I he'd be one. too happy about it, but I yeah. Know one. Uh, it was it was great. The funny thing was is when I did it, I've I've told this story many times, I'm sure you've heard it before, but when I did it, I told the cameraman, this is like one of those moments that I love to do, and I could do more so on Torchwood because it was my own show. 
Uh, and I said to the camera guys, I said, whatever you do, I said, just keep the camera rolling, okay? Just keep it rolling and don't say cut. All right? And if you do cut, keep the camera rolling. They're like, why? I said, just do it. This is Spike, for Christ's sake. So James had his girlfriend there, uh, sitting off set, and we are doing that. Have y'all seen that episode in Torch? Would we come in like a gunslinger? It's like, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. We walk up to each other, and I had said to James beforehand, because I'm always aware of this kind of stuff, if I'm doing any scene, it's ironic with what's going on, I've always been very caught, caught uh, uh, you know, mindful and going up to people and saying, okay, we're gonna kiss. I, I don't like the kisses that go, I like to make them a little real, but there just is no tongue going on, okay? So it's an open mouth kiss, it looks real, we have to make it look passionate. Otherwise, it'll be silly. He's like, dude, totally go for it, totally go for it. I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm like, you really? And he's like, totally go for it, totally go for it. So, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo. we look at each other and I go. <laughs> First one, cut! And we keep rolling, and I walk away. And I say, you okay? And he's like, yeah, yeah, fine, 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 fine. And he walks over to his girlfriend, and he looks at his girlfriend, and he grabs her and goes, <laughs> Like, just to reaffirm <laughs> that he's actually still, you know, the, the James that he was. <laughs> so I think this is hysterical, and I'm like, I got him. <laughs> so I said, we, we're doing it again. They're like, yeah, we're doing it again. I'm like, okay, and action. <laughs> I go, <laughs> and cut. Still rolling, he walks over to his girlfriend again, and he goes, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> take 16. I'm like ready to go, and James, and they're going, we have to do it again, and I'm going to the director. Because I told him to keep doing it. And James is like, we gotta do it again? We gotta do it again? So I go, yeah, we gotta do it again. Are you okay? He's like, yeah, fine, 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 fine. And we walk over, and I go, do, 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 do. And this one is, than Sarah Michelle Gellar. <laughs> I don't have any stubble. Anyway, that's a joke! <laughs> that's a good one, I just made that up there, that's a new one. Kelsey, write that down, it's going in the app! <laughs> yes? Um, hello. Hi. Um, I saw you on Celebrity Juice. Yes, you did? Yes, I did. And, was and in fact, this, December 14th, if you can watch it online, ITV2, I'm doing the Celebrity Juice Christmas special. And trust me, <laughs> you thought the last one was funny? My pants burst open in the middle of a game <laughs> while I'm on my back with my legs in the air. <laughs> it's Merry Christmas to all. <laughs> and to all a good night. Jingle bells all the way. <laughs> As we say in, in the UK, the baubles were out. <laughs> Pity there wasn't a tree there. 
Yes. Um, I was wondering if the banana trick had anything to do with your name magician on NRL. If my banana trick had anything to do with me, me, me name, being named the magician? Yeah, on NRL. Why, because I make a banana disappear? Yeah. I think there's other names you could call me for that one. <laughs> not the magician. Yeah? Um, no, that's not how he was named. But I'll think of some other names for that. Okay. Like Dyson. <laughs> Thank you for being responsive. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have any other answer for that. And no, I'm not going to do the banana trick. That's okay. Thank no, you. what do you mean, yeah? I've done it only once before, right? And that was it. And I did it on, um, Wait, wait, I'm getting my picture taken from the side. Ready? <laughs> Get it? Good. Um, I, uh, I didn't want to, I, I wouldn't do the banana, because, you know, that's a hard one to explain <laughs> to families on the way home, right? Why did he eat a banana that way? Never mind! <laughs> You're all very confused right now, I can tell. Anyway, yes, go ahead. Hi, I'm Olivia. Hi, Olivia. I'm, I'm John. <laughs> I know you're known as the biggest prankster on set, but I'm wondering if anyone has gotten you with a good prank. No, never. <laughs> no one's ever got me at all. I mean, they might have done something that I found funny, but no one is, anyone who's ever set me up, I've always busted it. I find out, because no one's as good at it as me. Well, I, have, I have actually, with my family, I kid you not, I've, you know, said I was gonna like prank them and get them, and they all thought I was gone. I've hid in a cupboard for three hours once. <laughs> Just to wait for that moment. I get it from my father. My dad was the same. When my niece and nephew were little, uh, Claire and Turner, and they used to go visit Papa and Grandma, and my dad would, you know, uh, disappear. Um, my mom had gone shopping, and in one instance, my dad disappeared, and he waited, and the kids are in the house. Like, they, they, know, they knew by this time Papa was about to scare them. Well, they loved it, right? So they're trying to search for Papa, and they're like, and my dad can hear them, and they're going, hey, where is he? We can't find him. Oh my God, I'm upset. They're all scared to go look in things, because what my dad used to do to us when we were kids, he'd just like fall out of the closet like a dead body. <laughs> and have like his hand covered in ketchup, you know? <laughs> Seriously. It was a great growing up. It was. It was like living on the set of The Walking Dead. It was awesome. So they knew that he was about to pop out. Well, like, Four hours passed, and he hadn't shown up. And eventually, you know, this, this is my dad telling this story, eventually he had to start knocking, and he's going, Claire, Turner! And they found him eventually, and they, they said, you have to go get help, and they were like, Papa, where are you? He's like, I'm in one of the cupboards under the sink, and I'm stuck! <laughs> I can't get out! Go to the neighbors and get help! Turner went, I'll call the police, and he's like, no! <laughs> Don't call the police! Why not? Because we can't explain this! <laughs> You'll understand when you're 18! <laughs> Grandparent disappears for four hours leaving children alone, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they went and got the neighbor, and the neighbor's went around going, John, my dad's name's John, 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 he's like, I'm in the cupboard! <laughs> He's like, what? I'm in the closet. Well, your son was. Come out like him. <laughs> anyway, they did pull him out. And he couldn't walk for like two hours because his legs were in a cramp. My family are all idiots. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, Convention. Yes. yes. Yeah, you told me that earlier. Yeah. yeah. And you're finally yourself, right? Yes. Yeah, what you told me, oh, no, don't be, oh, I shouldn't, if you want, no, I, I just, no, I loved it. I love when people tell me stories like that. Great. Yeah, and um, I, my question is, when was that one exact moment for Captain Jack that you were like, this character is now a phenomenon? I don't, I don't know if there was ever a defining moment, but on television, you have to be on, and this is what I learned with children's television, you have to be on TV for two years in order to start getting recognition from the audience. Because the first year, they're just getting, they're getting familiar with you. Second year, they know you, 
and they know the character, or they then know who you are as a person. I think probably the defining moment for Jack, because people didn't pick up on it very quickly when I said about Rose Tyler, nice bottom, and then I went to go rescue towards the end of the episode with uh, Rose and the doctor, and I turned to the doctor and I said, I'll, I'll go deal with this. And then he says to Rose, uh, I don't think he's, so she says, well, why, what about me? Well, you know, why, why is he, help, why don't I help? He's like, well, you're not his type. No one picked up on it until the episode where I kissed Rose and then I kissed the doctor, both in equally the same way. And I think that was the moment because I did an interview for uh, um, an, uh, one, of the, one of the newspapers and they asked me about it and they said, did, did you realize that, you know, the, the shock that came out? I said, there was no shock. I said, we didn't get any, the thing that was great about that is people were like totally accepting of it. I said, and you know, it was m made to be normal. That was what I wanted to do, kissing one gender and another, it's normal. It's what, what you do. And so they were like, well, you know, you do realize you've caused a kerfuffle. Now you're like the first, you know, and you being openly gay, you're the first openly gay actor who's playing a hero to young people. And I went, yeah, and? <laughs> it's about bloody time. So I think, I think that was the defining moment. I mean, what, what do you think the defining moment was? Do you... Because I didn't, I, we all didn't realize that Jack was, we didn't realize Jack was going to become so popular. We really didn't. And it was when he went away that we're like, we have to bring him back. And then they were like, we have to give you your own show. And I was like, yes. <laughs> I was actually sitting there with my friend Samantha, and we were watching it, and I think you got like four words out. And, and we you're like, both I love just him. went and looked at each other and we were like, oh my gosh, favorite character. Like, we already knew, like, this is gonna be awesome. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. No, but that, yeah, he was instantly, and that was why when we changed doctors from the ninth to the tenth doctor, from uh, Chris to David, they told me ahead of time, which I was really disappointed at, they said, we're gonna have to let you go away for a, a season and then bring you back because Jack has proven to be so popular with the audience, he might overpower the new doctor. And I went, oh, really? <laughs> well, why don't you make me the new top? No. <laughs> so I went away knowing that I would come back, but it was to allow David to s establish his self as the new doctor, and he did it brilliantly and wonderfully. And then when Jack came back, there was, I don't know what it, why it was or uh, how it happened. Dave and, I just have, Dave and I just have a great chemistry together, as does Catherine and myself and Billy. It just all gelled, and that was, that was what, that's why we call it the golden age. Yep. You're welcome. Yes. Young man. Just pull the mic down a little bit. There you go. Awesome. Um, do you think that Malcolm Merlin will return to the arrow? Like this? Well, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Thea, I have something to tell you. <laughs> I'm not your father. <laughs> the youth of today. <laughs> it would be, yeah. No, I, I have no idea. It's not up to me. It's up to the producers and the writers. And uh, I, again, like Doctor Who, or if they asked me, of course I would come back. I love Malcolm, uh, Captain Jack changed my life. Mal I mean, it led me to Malcolm Merlin and a lot of other things. And then Malcolm Merlin has changed my life again. It's opened me up to a whole new fan base of, of people. It's all, I call them family. And We've also, it's opened up, you know, for myself and my sister to write comic books and all sorts of things have happened. So yes, definitely, if they asked me, I would come back. But they have to ask. <laughs> Do you want them back? <laughs> yes, my dear. Hi, John. Hi. I've been wanting to ask this question since uh, the Legion of Doom Nuns was announced, what, almost two years ago? Uh-huh. I want you to consider your fellow members of the Legion, Leonard Snart, Damien Dark, Thea Barthon, and answer this question. Date, marry, click. So date, marry? Cliff. Cliff. Or kill, whichever you prefer. No, okay, no. I think, um, okay. <laughs> 
date, marry, kill. I think I would have to... Uh, that's really difficult. All right, I love him, but I'd have to kill Eobard, okay? Too many flashes going around. Right? There's too many worlds at the moment. Okay, Eobard's dead, off the cliff, but before he goes, I would have to kiss him and smack his butt. Date? I'd have to date Damien. Because Damien, I'd have to date him because it would be, they'd be so naughty together. Right? Right? They would, they would be, like, mischievous, which they are. And I'd have to marry uh, uh, Leonard. Because, just, just because. <laughs> I say no more. Handcuff me. Anyway. <laughs> I say no more. Yeah, that's my answer to that. Thanks, John. You're welcome. Yes. Yeah, oh, you want someone want to hand him the mic rather than there you go, that'd be awesome. There you go. Now just hold it like I am and speak right into it. Brilliant. How did, how did you like playing an assassin on arrow? I loved it. <laughs> because I get I, I I got to get all my aggression out and all of my angst and anger and uh, not that I have much. But um, I, uh, I was able to do things that I was never able to do in real life, and that's what's awesome about being uh, part of the League of Assassins, and also being uh, Rachel Ghoul. And also I got a fab ring out of it. <laughs> Which I had them make me one. I have the ring. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I also have the gun that, um, you know, the laser gun that we used in Legends of Tomorrow? I also have that too. I have it in top of. I have my original squareness gun from Doctor Who. Right? Don't know how that went missing. <laughs> and I have the the other gun. They're up on my mantle. I don't know if any of you've seen the videos from our, what I call our, our reading and movie room in the uh, in the house. And I have all of my kind of toys and things up on the shelves. Stop laughing. <laughs> Those are in a drawer elsewhere. <laughs> Scott texted me the other night. I was in London, and I, w I was going, I was getting up, and he was going to bed. And he texted me, and he said, "Normally Scott reads, you know, before he goes to sleep, and he was he reads like something really heavy, like air crash investigation disasters, right? And I'm about to get on a plane, and he tells me what to do in case something happens. I'm like, thank you." <laughs> <laughs> and then, so he, he sends me a picture of what he's reading. Do you know what he was reading? What? Well, uh, Paddington Bear. <laughs> the first page of Paddington Bear, and I'm like, what, what are you doing? He's like, I just thought I'd read about Paddington. <laughs> I'm like, are you high? <laughs> <laughs> yes? Um, so I have a question about the new crossover Crisis on Earth X. Uh, why weren't you in it? Because... <laughs> Because I got blown up and I'm not on the show anymore. <laughs> they didn't offer me a contract. That's it. I don't know. Well, did you want me in it? Yes! Let the kid answer. <laughs> did you? Yes. You did. Well, I would have loved to be in it, but again, that's not my decision. So, just get on the computer and send out tweets and emails and things. Right? At Arrow. <laughs> CW underscore arrow. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Hi, John. Hi. Uh, a friend of mine, she was excited to come here. She loved you in Torchwood. She loved you in Doctor Who. But unfortunately, she had to bail last minute due to an event. But I was Due to an event? She, had, she got called into work last minute. Oh, she did. Yeah. But oh, I hate them. I know. <laughs> Do you have a phone on you? Give me the phone. <laughs> Your name? How old are you? 23. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your name? Casey, just do that like Superman. Ready? Turn to the audience. Go. Yeah. <laughs> and Sammy.
Yeah, is it? I just pressed that, yeah. On the left, show me. There, got it. I don't have my glasses on. Ready? One, two, three. What the Hi, Sammy. Uh, you can't be at my panel because your work, bastards, called you in. Um, and your friend Casey. Is she? He's... You don't know yet? Would you like her to be that kind of person? <laughs> Sammy, Sammy, I love you and you're not here, but I want you to uh, further on and maybe go on a date with Casey. <laughs> You never know, you might one day fall in love with your best friend. There you go. Love you, Sammy. Bye! You have to show her that. And let us know what happens. She's coming to the photo shoot tomorrow. Okay, well then, you'll show her that this afternoon, right? Tell her to tell, when she comes to the photo op, tell her to say, I'm Sammy, the video, from the video, right? Okay, I'll get it all working, don't worry. <laughs> Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Buy me a fight, catch me a catch. I have five more minutes. Hi. But would you like me to sing something for you? What did I sing for you last time? Oh, so memorable, thank you. Yes. Oh no, I wasn't here, I didn't do a panel, did I? Because I was sick. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Thank What's you. the story behind this? What's the story behind this? Well, um, there really isn't. <laughs> I just wanted, because of the popularity, before Wonder Woman, the movie came out, I grew up with retro Wonder Woman, so I wanted to be Wonder Man. So that's why I made it kind of a little masculine. <laughs> silly in the other, the big high, the wasted kind of stuff. And I wanted it to look fun, and I did it for, actually, for uh, also Comic Con, and I wore it there. I've been very specific about where I wear it, but I just, I like it. I think it's fun. It's great. It's all about having fun. Yes, over here. I'm trying to rapid fire these. If you could come back and play any character from the Arrowverse, who would you want to play? Myself? Like, be an entrepreneur called JB. The big gay JB. <laughs> I think that would be fun. Never gonna happen. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Hey, John. How, how you doing? doing? First time here. Is it? Yes, it is. I'm okay. Carl, my name is. The what? Carl, my name is. Carl with a C. Carl. Nice to meet you, Carl. You too. Yeah. Uh, my question is... Quit me. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> um, let's see. My question is... From being in the movies, you know, I'm saying on the different television shows, and now on the Arrow, like the transition and the experience, like I said. So, what's it been like going from one show to the next to the movies? Like, how much fun and what's been like, you know? Well, it's a lot of fun, but it's not really any different. There's di the discipline's the same, and uh, you have to be, you just know your lines and your mark, do all that kind of stuff. But for me, the motivation of doing things is to have fun, have fun and get the work done. And I think if I'm having fun, that comes across on camera. And also then I can do these kind of things and also to tell all the stories and I, yeah, I just, I'm really lucky. I enjoy my job and that's uh, what's great about going to all these different things. And you guys are part and parcel to have make, making my success happen. That's why I like to share it all so much with you. And people say I do it more than a lot of other people. It's just why, because you just make my life awesome. That's, that's it. Can, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I shake your hand?
Yeah, you can shake my hand, yeah. You're very welcome, thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate it, thank you. Yes, over here, quickly, 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 I'm getting the, the stink eye. What's the last musical you, you saw for this? The last musical I saw was Hamilton in Los Angeles. And I also saw it uh, in New York. Yeah. So I saw the original cast in New York. I'm so jealous. I wanted to go for so long. The funny thing was, when we were going to go see the show, we were in New Jersey doing it Heroes and Villains, and all the other, a lot of the Carol cast members were trying to get tickets, and they're paying extortion amounts of money for the tickets. And they were, and I'm like uh, trying to tell them, and they were not listening, and they're getting their management, and they were paying like, you know, $500, $1,000 for tickets, like up in the back of the balcony. And at the end of the day, they're like, oh my gosh, we got tickets, we got tickets. And I said to Kelsey, call this person, da 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 da. And they're like, we got tickets, and it's cost us so much money, blah, blah, blah. And I went, guys, I was trying to get your attention earlier. They're like, why? I said, because I got tickets too. I said, where are you sitting? They said, we're up in the back of the balcony. It costs a lot of money. I'm like, uh -huh. dude, I'm fourth row center, and I got them for free. <laughs> Mr. Musical Theater. <laughs> so yeah, loved it. And then I walked away and thought, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I want to be in the room where it happened, the room where it happened. <laughs> Thank you. God, I'm going to have to do my song, guys. I can't do any more questions. They're giving me the cut sign. So what would you like to hear? Something, what's, you're raising your hand. What? Can you sing Happy Birthday to me and my best friend? Can I sing Happy Birthday? It's her turn. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Quick, your question then, and I'll do it. Yes. Um, Quick. I just want to ask, how was it working with Scarif David Lloyd? It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was great. Happy birthday to who? Okay, to me, it's my birthday's in a week, and this is my first time. It's in a week? Well, you don't get it till next week. <laughs> this is my first time being, like, at a Heroes and Villains fan fest. Awesome. Well, welcome. So, who am I singing the birthday song to? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Jennifer Caitlin, happy birthday to you and many more. And welcome, you'll love these things. No, can't do that, because people are paying for photographs and that's the rules of the con and I can't do that, but thank you for asking. I, they would get very upset with me, wouldn't you? Thank you, and then they'd also find you and beat you. <laughs> However, I can't stop you walking in front of me and taking selfies over your shoulders. <laughs> See, come on, you, that, you guys gotta think out of the box like that. Like walk in front and go, hey, cause I'll go, hey. <laughs> so, what would you like to hear? Do um, you want a fast one or a slow one? What? Uh, what? Slow. Would you like a thousand years I want to show a hands, or I am what I am. A thousand years. I am what I am. Some people didn't vote. That's why we're in the trouble we are in this country. You have to vote. See, that wasn't that good? That was good, right? right? Didn't show a political side, but I just said vote, right? So, again, do you want to hear a thousand years? Or I am what I am. It's a thousand years, folks. Yeah. So this is a song that I, I recorded, uh, and I did it because um, I would, you know, when they passed gay marriage, and I, you know, you all know I'm a, a, a firm believer in equality, and no matter if it's LGBTQ or heterosexual or bisexual, whatever, and everyone should be treated equal. We should all be able to love who we love. I was. Uh, uh, and we went down to Riverside, uh, the uh, equality marriage, I'll call it, gay marriage passed, and we went down to get married because Scott and I said as soon as it did, we'd be married in the United States. The unfortunate thing is we have to be married in individual countries to have it recognized, which it shouldn't be. Wherever you're married, it should be recognized all over the world. That's it. That's what we're, we're moving for. When we went to Riverside, California, this, uh, uh, there was all older couples getting uh, married in their 70s and 80s. Um, and Scott and I were there and they said to us, would we, would we stand up and witness for a lot of them? And I said, of course we would. <clears throat> and after about four hours went by and we were witnessing for people, we videoed a lot, a lot of tears, a lot of laughing. One of the gentlemen came up to me and he was about in his early 80s and he came up to me and he said, thank you very much for doing this. He said, because I never thought in my lifetime 
I would ever be able to celebrate my love for my partner, Tom, ever publicly. Um, he, thought I, he said, I thought I would be dead before this happened. And he said, it means a lot to us because we know who you are, but we don't have any family left to share this with. And that to me was the most touching thing. So I recorded this song because nobody should ever tell you who you can love, but also if you wait a long time, eventually you will find Casey. <laughs> The one you love, all right? <laughs> Hit it. Of me, every breath, every hour has come to this. One step closer. I have died every day waiting for you, darling. Don't be afraid. I. Thank you very much. Set Don't forget, we have the photo up in this outfit if you want to come with me. I'll post fabulous. Bye, everybody.